I heard I'm on the clock, uh, and we got to try to make up time. And I guess the person that I'm going to introduce tonight, if she can't make the time up, there's no one in this room that can. And I think after I introduce her, you'll have a full understanding of that. It's my honor to introduce uh, Linda Long as an inductee into the 2017 uh, Hall of Fame at Stockton. Uh, I met Linda when she was a member of the girls basketball team at Atlantic City High School, where I formerly had coached but continued as a teacher while coaching at Stockton. We were part-time at the time. Her senior year, we began to recruit Linda, and I had the honor of coaching her her freshman season. And then after that, um, which she reminds me of quite often, I left to come back to Atlantic City because I continued to coach there, and I coached the boys' basketball program. So my friendship with Linda, thankfully, was never altered at one point or another because of that. And just a sidebar, Linda has moved away from Atlantic City, and she was running on the boardwalk yesterday, and Harvey Kesselman and I had to remind her just a little while ago, the building she ran by is now Stockton College, and it was the dorms. And she kind of looked at me like, well, man, I think I'd like to try to get back here somehow. Because <laughs> the footprint of, of Stockton's uh, new academic building is exactly where our high school was. And then the dorms were on an empty lot. One, I looked out my third floor window every day and looked at the beach and boardwalk, and now the students are gonna have that view right up next to the boardwalk. However, that's just a sidebar. Uh, as a member of the Stockton women's basketball team from 1988 to 1992, Linda was a three-time New Jersey Athletic Conference uh, first and second team honoree. She was a 1989 New Jersey Athletic Conference and ECAC Rookie of the Year, third in Stockton history in scoring. Stockton career ranks uh, first in steals, eighth in rebounds, ninth in assists. Single season top 10 list, three highest totals for steals, and fourth highest uh, in points. And that's basically the athletic resume. But in all honesty, knowing Linda as a high school player and knowing her now as an adult, the next phase of her life is probably the most impressive. Her professional resume is, is outstanding. Linda grew up in Atlantic City in the 80s and 90s. I was coach and teacher at Atlantic City High School. During this period of time, there were a lot of opportunities for the youth of Atlantic City to go the wrong way, and many of them did. There's a few in this room this evening that did not, and Linda obviously is, is one of them. Uh, the loud clanging of the slot machines will always remember the buses and limos roaring into town day and night, but probably not a whole lot of the money went into the families that attended Atlantic City High School. The money went elsewhere. So for our youth growing up in that town, to kind of get an idea of what it's all about, she realized real quickly that the glamour was false and she wanted to move on and go somewhere else. However, through athletics and a very strong desire to be successful, we can see this evening that Linda uh, made the right choice. Linda was a member of the United States Marine Corps after she graduated from Stockton. From October of 1993 to November of 2013, where she served in the following capacities. She was a drill instructor at Paris Island. So um, I know if I were to say anything wrong tonight, I would uh, um, get my rear end kicked. She then was the deputy director of recruiting for the school, the Marine School in San Diego. And then she was a company commander in San Diego and she retired uh, in San Diego. And just as a sidebar, I probably shouldn't say this, but I asked her what she's doing now. Is she fully retired? She says, Coach, I work for the government, but I tell secrets. <laughs> so Linda has not given up her ultimate goal of 
of, of serving our country. Um, however, this is what really makes Linda different and separates her from many, many people that I've ever coached in my life. After retiring from the Marines, Linda decided to go back to college and obtain her degree, her master's degree, because she wants to coach. Ultimately, she wants to coach. She's coaching AAU right now. Upon completion of her degree, she sends me an email. And we would stay in touch every now and then. Where are you? One day, she popped into the I-Wing gym back in about 2006 or so and was just walking around the campus. Uh, but she writes me and says, I would like to express my gratitude and appreciation to my college basketball coach, Joe Fussner, who concerned himself with the person that I would become after high school. He told me that I had the potential and deserved to play college basketball, so he made it possible for me to attend college and play for him. What he didn't know at the time was that I never dreamed that I would go to college because I grew up in an environment where exceeding expectations was not illustrated as a value. The kindness and generosity that he showed me so many years ago inspired me to pursue coaching so that I may be able to help young athletes in situations to similar experiences and realize their full potential. Linda is the epitome of giving back. She realizes where she came from. She grew up in Atlantic City in a very, very difficult time. And trust me, she had a very, very difficult life. I only had the opportunity to coach her one year here, but I knew her as a faculty member at Atlantic City, followed her as a player there, and continued to follow her here. Um, two real quick stories, or one real quick story on Linda, uh, what kind of a player she was, and actually they were talking about it early tonight. She played down in Salisbury, and um, I know there's some referees in the room, so this probably is a violation, but there were nine players on Stockton's women's team then. Seven of them fouled out, which means there were two players on the floor, Linda and another player. Somehow they managed to get the ball in, get it down the floor, and Linda on that particular day scored 45, 47 points. And when, when we talked about it, she turns around and said to me, well, you got to understand the other player has the career and assist because she's the one that threw me the ball. <laughs> uh, Hall of Fame members tonight, congratulations on your induction as well. Uh, friends, parents, faculty members, administration staff, meet Linda Long. Good evening. <laughs> Coach Fussner, um, thank you so much for that warm reception. You're awesome. <laughs> um, I'm going to repeat some things that you've already heard from Coach Fussner. Uh, I hope that you can labor through it. Um, let me begin first by thanking uh, Dr. Kesselman and the Hall of Fame Committee for giving me this honor. Thanks also to my family and my friends for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. It means the world to me. Uncle Lawrence for filling in. My father passed and you're filling in for my father. Thank you for being here, Uncle Lawrence. Cousin Larry, uh, Cousin Nisi, and my, and my niece, Christiana. Thank you. A special thanks to my former basketball coaches, Joe Fussner and Kathy Morris. Kathy, well, we'll get back to you, Kathy. You know, I, I am very grateful that it's been over 25 years since my coaches have seen me because with uh, time and age comes memory loss. And obviously they've forgotten what a piece of work I was because they actually showed up. Kathy, Kathy you, made, uh, you may have only had seven players um, on your team, but we were seven of the most committed players. 
because of your authenticity, your consistency, and the team culture that you established. Thank you, Kathy, for creating and nurturing an environment where teammates became family. Now I need to give a special shout out to two of the best friends and teammates anybody could ask for, Tara McCord and, well, Tara Burns and Nicole Cicero. I consider not attending tonight because I live in California and uh, because I had a lot of excuses, um, but I decided to run those excuses by Tara first. Um, and as always, Tara came through with her practical logic. Linda, of course you're going. Don't be silly. We'll make a reunion of it. I'll talk to Nicole Cicero, and we'll plan the whole thing. And of course, after hearing the I'll talk to Nicole Cicero part, I got scared. <laughs> I started to flash back to the times where um, uh, whenever Tara and Nicole Cicero had good ideas. Like the time when we almost went to jail <laughs> after stuffing our jackets with biscuits from Roy Rogers off the parkway. Or the time we decided that it was a good idea to drive from campus to New York City for bagels at 1 a.m. Mind you, I had Frank Smith's uh, sociology of sports class at 9 a.m. Linda, don't be silly. Of course you'll be on time. I stand here being honored tonight for two reasons. The kindness of a stranger and selflessness of teammates. I had no plans for my life after high school. In fact, I would have dropped out if not for my love of basketball. Fortunately, my life's direction was altered one day at basketball practice when a stranger took interest in my future. That stranger concerned himself with the person that I would become after high school. He told me that I had skills and potential and that I deserved to play college basketball. And so, over the course of a summer, he shuttled me to and from one basketball league to the next, ensuring that I stayed sharp and I improved in areas where I was deficient. Utilizing the Equal Opportunity Funding Program, he made a way for me to attend college and play basketball for him. I went on to a successful basketball, uh, college basketball career. I earned a master's degree and I served my country honorably for 20 years as a U.S. Marine. I owe my athletic, academic, and military successes to someone who knew I did not have to become a negative statistic. He stepped in and offered help. That stranger was my college basketball coach, Joe Fussner. I said I wasn't gonna cry. <laughs> Joe, the, kind of, the kindness and generosity that you showed me so many years ago, inspired me to pursue coaching and begin the work of opening a basketball academy so that I might be able to help young female athletes who find themselves in situations uh, similar to mine um, realize their full potential. Thank you, Joe. Aristotle once said, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And team sports is a perfect example of this concept. When everyone plays their position as best they can, then the whole team benefits. And occasionally, this unity of effort 
creates opportunities for individual team members to shine. It's because of the selflessness of my teammates that I've been given this opportunity to shine. Thank you, teammates. My final comments for this evening reflect back to North Philadelphia in 1976, and I was six years old. I had made my own basketball court. This court was made from a milk crate that I nailed to a light pole. You could find me at this milk crate from the time that I woke up until the time that I went to sleep. And in the wintertime, when the snow had fallen, I'd come out and I'd sweep that fresh snow away. And I would practice dribbling the ball up and down the block, back and forth, in between my legs. But at no time did it cross my mind that doing these things consistently would lead me to this night. I am humbled and thankful for this honor. Thank you.